Professor Alexander Schmidt. Um, we are very happy to have you here for our City Makers uh, video um, interview um, in the term of the Rhein Ruhr network. Um, you have been part of the first uh, physical network, the offline in um, Essen. And uh, we, we plan to have a, a second one in May, but uh, due to Corona crisis, it was not possible. So now we are happy to have you here digitally. Um, first of all, I would like to ask you to, to introduce yourself briefly, because not um, some, maybe some of our, our listeners haven't met you yet. So a brief introduction, what you do and where you are, what is in the background. <laughs> yes. Um... Well, my, my uh, the main topic is the urban system, uh, linking different disciplines uh, uh, which are dealing with urban uh, issues. So it's, it's all about the urban mobility, it's the healthy city, it's the city and climate change, uh, and of course the city and the beauty um uh, in my background you can see i'm i'm not uh sitting in the middle of a city i'm sitting in the middle of uh, the countryside because uh, 6 years ago we escaped from well the ugly unhealthy uh dense noisy city and uh, now we are in the middle of uh, Schleswig-Holstein. So I think uh, this uh, will make it a little bit more difficult to focus on the city in the following <laughs> questions. But still dealing with uh, um, cities, uh, urban areas, urban regions, uh, mega cities. Since you have been living in the rhine ruhr area and now living on the countryside, you can um, compare, probably better compare uh, the differences and coming to the next question, um, because the topic is Corona crisis, was what has changed most from your point of perspective? What has changed most uh, positively and negatively uh, through the Corona crisis in urban well, life? Well, we discovered that uh, a lot of people are... Uh, well, uh, trying to flee the city um, and trying to get a, a more healthy environment, uh, but still being connected uh, with the city, having one foot in the city, one foot in the countryside. And I think this is right now uh, the best uh, way to live for uh, people looking at uh, a healthy environment, working online, sometimes traveling to city and um, being in the, uh, contact to all these people, the decision makers in the cities. Mm -hmm. it, it reminds me, we, uh, we had a uh, same interview with um, Professor Kipar, a landscape architect of land, and he mentioned that there is probably pushed through the corona crisis a movement from the city to the countryside. So uh, according to what you said, it is the Corona crisis really supported or pushed the people to rethink urban life and um, going to the countryside to enjoy more nature. Uh, uh, this reminds me to one of our scenarios for the Ruhr area, the, the big project we are just finishing. One scenario is de-urbanization, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, which means uh, since... Uh, the Ruhr um, region is, in some parts, it's dense, it's very hard to get good living conditions, and it will take uh, such a long time that um, to um, reorganize and to reshape and, and to redesign this um, old industrial region that many people um, uh, try to to uh, move into the periphery, and this is what I call uh, deurbanization. Since you mentioned it, the project Nemo, um, could you give us? Uh, I know that you are planning to to finish the project in summer, but of course we are eager to hear a little bit more about the findings in this uh, neue Emscher Mobilität Nemo, the project you are um, part of. Well, uh, the the basic idea that we developed. Uh, 
scenarios, uh, and these scenarios like uh, healthy and uh, healthy and and sustainable, s smart and deurbanized deurbanization. These three scenarios have been the, the basic for modeling uh, the transportation, the complete urban development, and the. Uh, the change uh, and the attitudes of the citizens. So we have, uh, this is a highly transdisciplinary project where we do not have complete results or, or recommendations. Uh, this is more or less a, a, a decision-making tool in the very end where uh, measures and uh, recommendations for, uh, for push and pull activities for the, the urban mobility is the focus. Mm -hmm. And this is oriented towards uh, the cities and um, the region, of course, where we want to make uh, uh, we want to make the people aware, the decision makers, stakeholders, and and all, uh, of course, uh, the regional uh, government, that it is necessary to to look the direction of the future, not mm -hmm. in one year or two years, mm -hmm. no, in ten years and thirty years, what should be uh, aimed at. at for the future development, because the decisions have been made now, and COVID-19 is is a wonderful example uh, as part of the project. Uh, even if this is only the last three months happening, um, this changed a lot in in the uh, in the result, putting um, a, a new light onto the the, the final uh, findings. Mm -hmm. So. Um, this is uh, leading to one of your questions, actually. I think many uh, people, citizens as well as the stakeholders, uh, are, can see how strange it is. is um, the, the public space in a city is only occupied by private cars. And this kind of absurdity mm -hmm. is you have a public space and all of a sudden... The cars are, well, only many percent. And you see how empty this space is and why is it not uh, being used uh, by the by the people, by the uh, uh, walking or bicycling, uh, active, uh, active um, um, transportation, active uh, uh, mobility. And I think this is very important that people can see this or have been seeing this in, in, in the cities. And this might be a new approach to say, let's rethink the public space, not only for cars. And this is the movement in, in many cities, not only Berlin. Yeah. Everybody. So we have to rethink public space and it's especially um, the the space for, for moving around. Um, I, th I think it's, uh, in a way, it's, the individual cars that are blocking the street and occupying too much space compared to pedestrians, bikers, but also for gathering and, and playing together or for kids. Yeah, I think uh, we all experienced that and uh, it gave a lot of people um, inspirations and um, new ideas. So this will be one of your recommendations from the NEMO program you are you're going to finish. That's great. Um, Coming to the last question, what else? I think this was already a recommendation, but in in terms of how we are going to develop or how are we professional city planners and, and citizens, how do what should we keep from the corona experience for the future of the cities? What should we apply to further urban planning? I've been mentioning the mobility urban mobility and i think this is the chance to deal with public space but of course as as we could see from covid 19 the um, courtyard in neighborhoods uh, where people have concerts or where people have have from their from their balconies listening to 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 uh, people playing music or you have uh, I've seen one uh, um, movie, uh, private movie uh, theater, where somebody is projecting on one of the uh, empty walls. I think this is bringing people together. And for for some neighborhoods, uh, it, it has been working quite well. So I think this this could be a new movement that people are more acquainted to the neighborhood instead of going 
out, going to the big places, going shopping. There, I think this is this is changing a city enormously. Uh, uh, you can see here, and you can you can observe this uh, from the the parks and and shopping malls that nobody is really um, eager to go shopping because. Because there was a stop for three months and nobody uh, uh, is missing it in, in, <laughs> in, the, in the sense. And, and the other people are saying, uh, uh, why are the people are not shopping anymore? Mm. And I think this it was important to to stop the machine. And is it really uh, the way of, of living we wanted? Being being part of this fast running machine or uh, is, is it necessary to... to uh, to go only to the city for shopping? No, maybe it's the culture, and maybe it's the social gathering, maybe it's a museum, or 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 just um, um, enjoying public space. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so I think this this is uh, this was a necessary as a stop. And we think uh, as as long as you are locked in uh, in, in your apartment and you, you just only see the people. Uh, on on online um, that the city is more than shopping uh, uh, being uh, sh showing off on the big places in the coffee and meeting people uh, just mm. for, for 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 talking yes true i uh, yeah I, I totally agree i think corona showed um that there is a the, that we need a change structurally in the city, that the city and the public spaces is not just about commercial and, and shopping, but um, that we also have to focus more on the neighborhoods, on the quarters to to vitalize what we already have in the neighborhood. And if something is missing, like a shop, so the, the small shops around the corner where you get your stuff. And as you mentioned, somebody doing a private uh, cinema projecting on the wall or all these activities that we can generate in the neighborhoods, in the quarters, are uh, essential. And they are very uh, vulnerable to everyone living in the neighborhood, especially the ones that don't want to move or that don't need to move. I think it is about how we are creating the neighborhoods and the cities for the future, not around uh, commerce more than uh, around the, the community and community activities, yes. I, I think the, the term appropriation space is very important because, uh, as you mentioned, this it's it's the people and they are now after three months lockdown and they are aware what is public space, uh, how mm. do I move, can I move? Uh, um, uh, I think uh, talking about well the terms of uh, Participatory approaches uh, is is uh, gaining a new meaning uh, by uh, appropriating space by uh, using the space by by uh, using the space actively and with other people in within the neighborhood, but also the public space uh, in a in a big city. And yes. I think it's very important that that the decision makers, the stakeholders, are not stopping that. Uh, it is important that they listen to these movements. Um, uh, it, so it should be not only a pop-up bike path, it should be more pop-up public space, pop-up coffee, etc., etc., in order to test what is really necessary uh, for uh, the new uh, urban culture. So so uh, um, urban professionals should be more experimental experimental not just having pop-up bike lanes but also try new yeah. things and to provide public space to do other things than driving a car yeah mm. yes great thank you so much um thank you for your time in your green paradise in northern germany and um, now i understand why you don't want to come back to the busy cities um, and as city makers we hope next time we will See you in person again somewhere in Berlin or in the Rhine Rural area. Yes. Have Thank a great you. summer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.